When Abram was ninety-nine years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. I will make my covenant between me and you, and will multiply you exceedingly. Abram fell on his face. God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with you. You will be the father of a multitude of nations. Neither will your name any more be called Abram, but your name will be Abraham, for the father of a multitude of nations have I made you. I will make you exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of you. Kings will come out of you. I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your seed after you throughout their generations, for an everlasting covenant, to be a God to you, and to your seed after you. I will give to you, and to your seed after you, the land where you are traveling, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession. I will be their God. God said to Abraham, As for you, you will keep my covenant, you and your seed after you, throughout their generations. This is my covenant which you shall keep between me and you and your seed after you. Every male among you shall be circumcised. You shall be circumcised in the flesh of your foreskin. It will be a token of a covenant between me and you. He who is eight days old will be circumcised among you. Every male throughout your generations, he who is born in the house, or bought with money of any foreigner who is not of your seed, he who is born in your house, and he who is brought with your money must be circumcised. My covenant will be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. The uncircumcised male who is not circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. God said to Abraham, As for Sarai your wife, you shall not call her name Sarai, but her name will be Sarah. I will bless her, and moreover I will give you a son by her. Yes, I will bless her, and she will be a mother of nations. Kings of peoples will come from her. Then Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said in his heart, Will a child be born to him who is one hundred years old? Will Sarah, who is ninety years old, give birth? Abraham said to God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before you. God said, No, but Sarah your wife will bear you a son. You shall call his name Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant for his seed after him. As for Ishmael, I have heard you. Behold, I have blessed him, and will make him fruitful, and will multiply him exceedingly. He will become the father of twelve princes, and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant I will establish with Isaac, whom Sarah will bear to you at this time next year. When he had finished talking with him, God went up from Abraham. Abraham took Ishmael his son, all who were born in his house, and all who were bought with his money, every male among the men of Abraham's house, and circumcised the flesh of their foreskin in the same day, as God had said to him. Abraham was ninety-nine years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. Ishmael his son was thirteen years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. In the same day both Abraham and Ishmael his son were circumcised. All the men of his house, those born in the house, and those bought with money of a foreigner were circumcised with him. The Pharisees and Sadducees came and testing him, asked him to show them a sign from heaven. But he answered them, When it is evening, you say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. In the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and threatening. Hypocrites, you know how to discern the appearance of the sky, but you can't discern the signs of the times. An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign and there will be no sign given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. He left them and departed. The disciples came to the other side and had forgotten to take bread. Jesus said to them, Take heed and beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees. They reasoned among themselves, saying, We brought no bread. 
Jesus, perceiving it, said, Why do you reason among yourselves, you of little faith, because you have brought no bread? Don't you yet perceive, neither remember the five loaves for the five thousand, and how many baskets you took up, nor the seven loaves for the four thousand, and how many baskets you took up? How is it that you don't perceive that I didn't speak to you concerning bread? But beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Then they understood that he didn't tell them to beware of the yeast of bread, but of the teaching of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Now when Jesus came into the parts of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? They said, Some say John the Baptizer, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. I also tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my assembly, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give to you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he charged the disciples that they should tell no one that he is Jesus the Christ. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders, chief priests, and scribes, and be killed, and the third day be raised up. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this will never be done to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of men. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, and whoever will lose his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his life? Or what will a man give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will render to everyone according to his deeds. Most assuredly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will in no way taste of death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Chapter 6 Now it happened, when it was reported to Sanballat and Tobiah, and to Geshem the Arabian, and to the rest of our enemies, that I had built the wall, and that there was no breach in it, though even to that time I had not set up the doors and the gates, that Sanballat and Geshem sent to me, saying, Come, let us meet together in one of the villages of the plain of Ono. But they thought to do me mischief. I sent messengers to them, saying, I am doing a great work, so that I can't come down. Why should the work cease? Why should I leave it and come down to you? They sent to me four times in this way, and I answered them after the same manner. Then Sanballat sent his servant to me in the same way the fifth time, with an open letter in his hand in which was written, It is reported among the nations, and Gashmu says, that you and the Jews think to rebel, for which cause you are building the wall, and you would be their king, according to these words. You have also appointed prophets to preach about you at Jerusalem, saying, There is a king in Judah, and now it shall be reported to the king according to these words. Come now, therefore, and let us take counsel together. Then I sent to him, saying, There are no such things done as you say, but you feign them out of your own heart. For they all would have made us afraid, saying, Their hands shall be weakened from the work, that it not be done. But now, God, strengthen my hands. I went to the house of Shemaiah, the son of Deliah, the son of Mahatabel, who was shut up, and he said, Let us meet together in the house of God, within the temple, and let us shut the doors of the temple, for they will come to kill you. Yes, in the night they will come to kill you. I said, should such a man as I flee? And who is there 
that being such as I would go into the temple to save his life, I will not go in. I discerned, and behold, God had not sent him, but he pronounced this prophecy against me, and Tobiah and Sanballat had hired him. For this cause was he hired that I should be afraid and do so in sin, and that they might have matter for an evil report, that they might reproach me. Remember, my God, Tobiah, and Sanballat according to these their works, and also the prophetess Noadiah and the rest of the prophets that would have put me in fear. So the wall was finished in the twenty-fifth day of the month Elul, in fifty-two days. It happened, when all our enemies heard of it, that all the nations that were about us feared, and were much cast down in their own eyes, for they perceived that this work was worked of our God. Moreover, in those days the nobles of Judah sent many letters to Tobiah, and the letters of Tobiah came to them. For there were many in Judah sworn to him, because he was the son-in-law of Shechaniah the son of Ara, and his son Jehohanan had taken the daughter of Meshulam, the son of Berechiah, his wife. Also they spoke of his good deeds before me, and reported my words to him. Tobiah sent letters to put me in fear. He came to Derby and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timothy, the son of a Jewess who believed, but his father was a Greek. The brothers who were at Lystra and Iconium gave a good testimony about him. Paul wanted to have him go out with them, and he took and circumcised him because of the Jews who were in those parts, for they all knew that his father was a Greek. As they went on their way through the cities, they delivered the decrees to them to keep, which had been ordained by the apostles and elders who were at Jerusalem. So the assemblies were strengthened in the faith, and increased in number daily. When they had gone through the region of Phrygia and Galatia, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. When they had come opposite Mysia, they tried to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit didn't allow them. Passing by Mysia, they came down to Troas. A vision appeared to Paul in the night. There was a man of Macedonia standing, begging him and saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go out to Macedonia, concluding that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel to them. Setting sail, therefore, from Troas, we made a straight course to Samothrace, and the day following to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is a city of Macedonia, the first of the district, a Roman colony. We were staying some days in this city. On the Sabbath day, we went forth outside of the city by a riverside, where we supposed there was a place of prayer, and we sat down and spoke to the women who had come together. A certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Thyatira, one who worshipped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened to listen to the things which were spoken by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she begged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and stay, she urged us. It happened, as we were going to prayer, that a certain girl having a spirit of divination met us, who brought her masters much gain by fortune-telling. The same, following after Paul and us, cried out, These men are servants of the Most High God, who proclaim to us the way of salvation. This she did for many days. But Paul, becoming greatly annoyed, turned and said to the Spirit, I charge you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. It came out that very hour. But when her masters saw that the hope of their gain was gone, they seized Paul and Silas, and dragged them into the marketplace before the rulers. When they had brought them to the magistrates, they said, These men, being Jews, are agitating our city, and set forth customs which it is not lawful for us to accept or to observe being Romans. The multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates tore their clothes off of them and commanded them to be beaten with rods. When they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, threw them into the inner prison and secured their feet in the stocks. But about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bonds were loosened. The jailer, 
being roused out of sleep and seeing the prison doors open, drew his sword and was about to kill himself, supposing that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Don't harm yourself, for we are all here. He called for lights and sprang in, and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas, and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They said, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him, and to all who were in his house. He took them the same hour of the night, and washed their stripes, and was immediately baptized, he and all his household. He brought them up into his house, and set food before them, and rejoiced greatly with all his household, having believed in God. But when it was day, the magistrates sent the sergeants, saying, Let those men go. The jailer reported these words to Paul, saying, The magistrates have sent to let you go. Now therefore come out and go in peace. But Paul said to them, They have beaten us publicly, without a trial, men who are Romans, and have cast us into prison. Do they now release us secretly? No, most assuredly, but let them come themselves and bring us out. The sergeants reported these words to the magistrates, and they were afraid when they heard that they were Romans, and they came and begged them. When they had brought them out, they asked them to depart from the city. They went out of the prison and entered into Lydia's house. When they had seen the brothers, they comforted them and departed.